Today, I want to talk to you about the most exciting yet also frustrating amateur radio band out there. And that is the 6 meter or the 50 megahertz band. As you can see, most of the time, it looks like this. Completely dead, no signals whatsoever. Now, that doesn't mean that 6 meters is never open. Of course, it does open, but you kind of have to be there to be able to work the DX. It's one of those real elusive bands. It's a very challenging band, but it is possible to be able to predict when the band's going to be open. And I want to show you some tips and also some antennas and other things here to try and help you get started on the six meter band. So if we have a look here, this is the main tool that I use because uh, digital modes are so prevalent at the moment, such as FT8. Uh, there's so much data being fed into these programs such as PSK Reporter that we could use these to find out real-time band conditions. So here at the moment, if I just move my little uh, icon there, I'm looking here at the six meter band and I'm showing the signals here that are sent and received by the country of the call sign. I've put my call sign in there. So these are all of the six meter reported signals right here at the moment. So at the moment, I'm looking at Australia because I've got that. I'm looking at FT8, you can pick other modes here. Um, on PSK Reporter, but for the main one, FT8, because that's the main amount that we've got. Now, because of the sheer amount of spots that this uh, program or this software, PSK Reporter, gets, spotting software, spotting software, spotting, spotting database, then uh, you're limited to 15 minutes because otherwise it would display so much. So here at the moment, you can see there's quite a lot here to Japan. There's a little bit here to China as well. And I expect that later on in the day that we'll get some more over to Europe here. Interestingly here, I live here down here in Tasmania. There is one station down here that is getting a few, uh, getting out towards uh, Japan and China. And I'm not seeing them here at the moment. I'm actually running FT8 here uh well i was until i just started doing this video but i had been running ft8 and i wasn't seeing anything at all on the band so uh so that's interesting that even a station that's relatively close to me is hearing something on six meters that i'm not hearing and the reason for this whole video is to just raise awareness around this band because there are special times where it will be open and one such time is around the solar cycle peak it will open up worldwide on the solar cycle peak because of using the F layer. The F layer gets ionized by the sun, which in turn you can get longer distance contacts on bands such as 6 meters, 10 meters, 12 meters and those higher HF bands. Uh, so we're looking at two numbers here, the SFI, the solar flux index, which currently is 277, which is massively huge. Um, and we've also got the sunspot number, which is 173. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of a geomagnetic uh, storm going on at the moment, which does degrade conditions a little bit. But we could still see that we are getting some openings by looking at uh, PSK Reporter. And a majority of these will be on a thing called Sporadic E. So for a couple of things, just not to confuse it here, we want these numbers to be rather high or as high as possible for F layer, F layer propagation. So our signal hits the F layer of the ionosphere and bounces back. Uh, this could be sort of a bit hit and miss depending on what the sun's doing. But sporadic E comes back every single summer predominantly as a peak um, in your local hemisphere. So here in the southern hemisphere, our peak times are uh, around about from late October, early November through to probably around about mid January. They're the main, that's the main peak area. And then there's a smaller peak in winter. And then of course you flip that around for uh, the Northern hemisphere. So generally around about late spring, summer is the time that you want to be targeting for sporadic E operation. And I did a whole video on sporadic E. I did a presentation to a club in Arizona all about sporadic E. And if you want to learn more about it, then there will be a link below in the description so that you can dive more into that to figure out uh, more about sporadic E. Now, as far as antennas uh, go, this is the antenna that I'm currently running here at the moment. I am using a five element Yagi. This is a YU7EF design. Again, I've done a video on this and they'll be linked below. Um, I built it there. Uh, oh, sorry, Richard 7ZBX, who you just saw flash up there. He built this and uh, it's quite lightweight. It's easy 
to build, um, transportable as well. And I use this antenna to try and work DX, long distance DX. Now, for those who think that you can't work long distance DX on six meters, I can assure you that it is possible. This is my first ever US station um, in Arizona, W0XR. And I worked uh, Jackson on FT8. And you can see there that was on the 24th, the 3rd, 23. And my first ever USA DX contact on six meters. And um, I keep this QSL card up in my background because um, it was a, a, just out of the blue contact, actually. It was really early here in the morning, I think about 6.30 in the morning. And I managed to to work him just the, the signal just come out of the blue, which is an inherent of six meters. So uh, it was really good. Uh, and in previous times, I also have been able to work just with a simple vertical antenna. I've been able to hear other US stations here. You can see here on one of my previous videos from quite a few years ago that I was hearing the USA and Mexico on just a vertical antenna. And uh, I described this and then I also go and show some of the local DX that I was working around uh, VK and ZL as well. And speaking of the vertical antenna, this is uh, an easy to make antenna for six meters that I've um, done a video on before. This is just using one piece of coax, also known as a flower pot antenna. And I've got this mounted on a telescopic pole, telescopic fiberglass uh, pole, and it works really, really well. And you can make this for any portion of the six meter band. You can have it in the FM portion at the top if you want to just use this for repeaters or simplex, or you can use it for SSB, CW further down. And a lot of people have had success with this antenna and have worked many, many stations um, just on a simple wire antenna such as this. So you don't need a large Yagi. Large Yagi is very helpful for working long distance DX, that's for sure. But for instance, I was using that antenna and easily working Japan from here on six meters. So it's not an absolute requirement that you need the biggest antenna going around for six meters. So uh, try out the, the band. Almost every single HF transceiver includes six meters in it these days. It's kind of the forgotten band that's sort of hidden away, squirreled in your HF radio. So if you have the ability to get on six meters, give it a go. Some common frequencies that might help you out. 50.110, that is the international SSB calling frequency on upper sideband. So try 5110, monitor it. I know that uh, there's a lot here in Australia that monitor that frequency and they hear people calling CQ. 50.313, that is the FT8 frequency for... Uh, six meters, that is where you'll hear the most amount of activity because a lot of people are using FT8 due to the weak signal characteristics of six meters. Or 50.293, that is the whisper frequency uh, that you can also use. A lot of people um, just sit there transmitting whisper beacons to see where the propagation takes them on whisper. Yes, it can be an incredibly frustrating band, but it is so rewarding when you get to work stations all over the world on VHF. It's, it's not that often that you get to do that and it can be a real challenge. Let me know what your experiences are with six meters in the comments below. And if you wanna learn more about six through some of those videos that I mentioned earlier on, then those will display on the screen and in the description below.